Coming up on OC News, our university's graduation program is all set for a major achievement. We'll tell you what it is and more. And it's time for finals once again. We'll take a closer look on campus to see what students are doing to study and how you might be able to collect some free stuff. OC News starts right now. Welcome to our final edition of OC News for the spring semester of 2015. I'm Jasmine Campfriend. And I'm Lauren Gross. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. California State University Fullerton's graduating class of 2015 is getting ready to celebrate their big day. And Tatiana Garcia has the details on why the class is going to be a little more unique than others. As graduation seems to sneak upon us day by day, soon-to-be graduates at California State University Fullerton could not be more excited. Over the time that we all have spent at Cal State Fullerton, it has become more than just a place where we go to school. It has also become a community where we gain the tools necessary to be successful in accomplishing our dreams while building lifelong relationships and friends. A reason our graduating class is unique is that we will forever be remembered as the class of three million. The graduating class that increased the overall number of graduates from the California State University to 3 million. The California State University institution is where a great majority of students receive their baccalaureate education here in California. As well, it is a place where those seeking professional training as teachers, nurses, engineers, and social workers go to as well. The California State University is celebrating reaching 3 million alumni worldwide. All the alumni from the 23 campuses in the class of 2015 are a part of the special class of 3 million celebration. It's like really cool that I've been here these four years and then all of a sudden it's over. It's kind of sad, it's bittersweet, but it's really cool to be like the class of 3 million. It makes it that much more special and makes it more significant to remember. So as we get ready to say goodbye to CSUF forever, remember that our 2015 class is a part of something greater and that all the times you wanted to give up, all the times you do not want to study for that test, and all the times you gave up your sleep will finally be worth it when you walk down to receive your diploma. But just remember, graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. Reporting from OC News, I'm Tatiana Garcia. ASI offers a variety of opportunities to ease the anxiety that comes along with finals. Kelsey Lujan is on campus checking out what CSUF offers. If you're stressed about finals, there's no need to stress anymore. Titan Pride Center has got you covered with free scantrons, note cards, and brain foods in this wagon that you can find on campus throughout this week and through next week. The TSU is also open for 24 hours through May 15th. Good luck on finals, Titans. For OC News, I'm Kelsey Lujan. Well, when life cuts the ability to be with your loved ones short, memories have to suffice. With a little help from Cal State Fullerton, a local family will continue to be close to their fallen loved one. Well, he's really good looking. <laughs> Let's start with that. Kristen Mervez Burt Cooper, formerly Kristen Burt, describes him as that person. When he laughed, he had this like hyena laugh that makes everyone else laugh when he laughs because his laugh was so ridiculous. My favorite thing about being his wife was that I always knew that I came first. That's it. And he never let you forget it. <laughs> it was 1996 and her husband, CHP officer Don Joseph Burt, had been shot and killed during a routine traffic stop off of the 57 freeway in Fullerton, just two months before the birth of their son, Cameron. He'd been involved in an accident on duty previous, and he, had been, he was asking for me. And so I, I said the same thing, is he asking for me? And then the officer just shook his head like that, and that's when I knew. I knew he was dead. So. And then we got to the hospital, and of course it was confirmed. So. Fast forward nearly 19 years and Cameron, now 18 years old and a music major at Cal State Fullerton, recalls who his dad was based on pictures he's seen, videos he's watched, and stories he's read on a Facebook memorial page. My dad is uh, me, about two inches shorter and a little less cool. <laughs> no, we are, from what I've heard, we're just exactly alike. I mean, I'll find days where I'll bring up music with my mom, just obscure things like bands like Pop Will Eat Itself that no one's ever heard of. And she'd be like, your dad listened to that band. How did you even hear about that? His freshman year coming to an end at Cal State Fullerton, Cameron Burt, who spends majority of his class time in the Joseph Clay Performing Arts Center, received a call from his mom. She had been notified on all days of the year, April Fool's Day, that a street on the Cal State Fullerton campus would be named after his late father. 
my first reaction, I said, is this a joke? Because this is like April Fool's Day, right? <laughs> and he said, no, it's not a joke. This is really real. Although it's unclear which street on campus will be named after the fallen officer or when it will be named, Cameron Burt has put some thought to it. This is really personal because I'm here every day. I mean, I'll be living right next to it and I get to see it every day. I mean, I've got the sign on the 57 that I see all the time. And so I'll, I'll be driving down that, go past the sign, turn on your Belinda, and then I'll see his name again. And it's just great knowing that people will drive by that every day. Either way, to Cameron and his family, it doesn't matter which street it is. It's simply a meaningful tribute to commemorate an officer who paid the ultimate sacrifice, but who was never forgotten. A father who never got to meet his son. But that son now carries on his legacy right here at Cal State Fullerton. Reporting from Fullerton, I'm Lauren Gross. Coming up after the break, a train derails in North Dakota causing a fire. We'll have the smoky details for you in our national news. Also, more pertinent information on California's water issues. OC News will be right back. It's what powers our journey to reach unimaginable heights. It fosters a sense of yearning to create, explore, and soar. It strengthens our will to climb to the top. It's the bedrock of our conviction that nothing's impossible. It transforms us and sets us free to thrive and build lives of purpose. Titan pride is at the heart of who we are. Are banks too big to fail? Democratic candidate Bernie Sanders gives his thoughts and a and for news on North Dakota train derailment, here's Anthony Alicia with the details. Independent Senator and Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders is taking aim at big banks. The lawmaker introduced tough legislation today targeting Wall Street. It would require banks with huge stakes in U.S. economy to break down into smaller entities or expect the federal government to do it for them. Also, in North Dakota, <clears throat> a town was forced to evacuate. The train was pulling 109 cars when it derailed near the town of Heimdall. According to the BNSF Railway, the company <clears throat> had 107 cars that were loaded with crude oil. Some of the cars caught fire, sending plumes of black smoke into the air. In a statement from BNSF Railway, it says no one was hurt but about 40 people were evacuated. <clears throat> the cause of the derailment is still unclear. Thanks, Anthony. Cheryl Treadway and her children were being held hostage by her boyfriend, Ethan Nickerson, when Treadway used the Pizza Hut app to get help. According to the Highlands County Sheriff's Office in Florida, the couple had argued throughout the day while Nickerson carried a large knife. When Treadway tried to leave to pick up her, pick up her children from school, Nickerson grabbed her and took her phone. The sheriff's office reports the couple then returned home when Treadway convinced Nickerson to let her use her phone to order a pizza. Treadway used the additional notes feature of the app to write out, quote, please help get 911 to me, end quote. Police arrived and talked Nickerson into surrendering, surrendering himself. Thankfully, no one was physically harmed. For the first time in California's history, there will be mandatory water regulations and mandatory water cuts for all Californians. The regulations went into effect this morning and have severe penalties for violators. Here's Erin Schwartz with the details. Even though this is a very difficult task, it's the one that we have to be, it, this is the path we have to be on given what we know. And what we know is California is in a dire situation. Very little rain, snow, and a limited water supply. This is about preparing for a drought that we now know can go beyond what we've seen in this century. And that's why for weeks the Water Control Resources Board has gone back and forth on how to tell cities, towns, and water suppliers to cut back to meet the governor's emergency order. Late Tuesday, they dropped the hammer. 
ordering cutbacks ranging from 8 to 36 percent, all based on how many gallons residents use each day. The more gallons, the bigger the cut. Water districts from L.A. to Lincoln tried to make their case to the board to show some mercy. Going down to one day week watering, we will be seeing brown lawns, we'll be seeing lots of vegetation dying. Some saying green lawns are needed to protect homes close to fire prone areas. Reducing this irrigation to meet our goal not only puts public health and safety at risk, but also creates a financial hardship to all of our residents. In the end, it didn't matter. The new regulations will start June 1st. The Water Board Chair says this isn't so much about preparing for this summer, but for multiple years of drought. That has meant huge problems for other countries like Australia and Brazil. Where they didn't take measures and they hoped for rain and now they're having to just turn the water off and that would have massive social and economic repercussions. And not only will the new water rules begin in June, so will the serious crackdown on water wasters. If they don't do it, right, that's when we get into a, an enforcement scenario where if they're continually refusing to do it, that could lead to fines. Well, is the weather in Orange County going to clear up? And are tornado watches in the Midwest going to end soon? Tatiana Garcia has more with the weather report. Hey guys, well these past few days have been a little gloomy outside, but lucky for us, things are going to clear up this upcoming Sunday. So let's take a look at our current temperatures. The current temperature is at 68 degrees and we have a low of about 56. The wind was about six miles per hour today and the humidity was at 47%. The sun rises at 5.58 and the sun is going to set at 7.39. Now let's take a look at our five-day forecast. Um, we'll be having some slight showers coming in on Friday, which isn't a bad thing, you know, since we are in a drought. But then the showers will clear up and we'll be back into the low 80s this upcoming Sunday, which I could not be more excited about. Um, let's take a look at our national forecast. Um, as you can see, we're starting to see higher temperatures all across the board, even in New York now and here in LA and um, in Northern California, we're staying in about the mid um, 60s. And there is unfortunately a tornado watch for some of the Midwest. Um, these tornado watches have been issued in the states of Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And also an airport in Oklahoma has been evacuated due to tornadoes nearby. These watches will most likely stay into effect until the end of the week, so hopefully everyone in that area can stay safe. As for us here in California, the temperatures are going to start warming up again as we head into finals next week, and of course, our summer vacation, and back to you guys. Coming up after the break, we'll give you the scoop on a Harry Potter-themed dinner happening on campus in just a few hours. Plus, it looks like Super Bowl's champion, the New England Patriots, might be in trouble after new determinations regarding Deflategate. That and more after the break. State Fullerton's own radio station located in the basement of Public Library. Students can stop by and pick up an application during our operating hours. Anyone who has a computer and internet can listen to us www.titanradio.org. A lot of people who want to pursue TV and film usually start out in radio. That's always a great opportunity. Having trouble keeping track of your eating habits? There's a new app that can help. Togardland allows users to track their food by simply snapping a photo. So forget about the hassle, hassle manually logging down your food. Lala soon will show you how you can stay on track with your fitness goals. Do you like taking pictures? Do you use social media apps like Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat? And do you ever worry about where you're eating to make sure that you're staying healthy? Well, if you've answered yes to any of these questions, then download the app Two Grand. Two Grand is easy to use. You can choose a fitness goal, get food inspiration ideas, and even receive achievements for completing your goals. All you have to do is take a picture of your food and post and caption it like you would to Instagram. You can then choose to share it on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Two Grand will remind you of your goals every day to help keep you on track. It also has a droplet icon where you can track how much water you're drinking. Here's how Two Grand has helped the user. Um, this app has helped me in ways that I didn't think it was going to help me because typically I like writing down what I eat like 
in like a food diary, but I feel like this has helped me because I have like a visual of my actual food and like the portions I've been eating. So it keeps me on track. So if you're trying to stay on track with your fitness and health goals, then give two grand a try. I mean, who doesn't like taking pictures of their food? Thanks for watching. I'm Lala Soon for OC News. The Gastronome and Housing are bringing the wonderful world, world of wizards to campus tonight. Christina Hilliard is in the gastro <laughs> to show you what's brewing. Thanks guys. Something magical is brewing in the Gastronome with the help of Housing and Residence Life. A Harry Potter themed dinner is afoot. As you can see behind me, they're setting up for the spectacular feast where they have everything from butterbeer to golden snitch cake pops. The entry is $12 plus tax, and the feast runs until 8, so grab your brooms and head on over. The magic awaits you. Reporting for OC News, I'm Christina Hilliard. Back to you. In the investigation into the deflating of game balls by the New England Patriots is now complete. In his report, attorney Ted Wells says it's likely two Patriots employees deliberately deflated the footballs and that star Patriots quarterback Tom Brady was aware. Patriots owner Robert Kraft says he's disappointed with the findings. The team and fans of the NFL will wait to see as the league decides on disciplinary action. So Koala enters an ER room. No, it's not a joke. It sounds like the beginning of a bad joke, but this was a real situation for the staff of a hospital emergency room in Hamilton, Australia, near Melbourne. Well, there he goes, he's so cute. Luckily, the curious koala bear did not need medical attention and was just poking him out in the waiting room. <laughs> oh, I can't. <laughs> so, um, the koala's big adventure was captured on surveillance video as he wanders. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's the just room so for cute. about three minutes until it left the same way it came in. Only in Australia, right? I mean, look at him though. He, how can you not laugh at that? I know it's so funny and it's super cute. <laughs> anyway, that's all for this edition of OC News. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to watch our final editions next week. Good night. <laughs> what?